Hello children, how are you? My name is Francis. I'm so excited that you are watching us again from wherever you are, whether you are in Nansana, whether you live in Gaba, whether you live in Mitiana, whether you, I don't know. I know you live in different places. It is a weekend and we are so excited that you are back again to watch here the Kids 252 show. And my name is Francis, by the way. I serve with Gaba Community Church and African Union Ministries. Now, last week we had something exciting and they introduced us to the Bible. Some of you have Bibles at home, but you've never even read your Bible. You got your Bible and you put it under your mattress, down there, there, there. And then what you said, ah, that book, cockroaches started biting your Bible. Um, you even don't know what, the, what books are in the Bible. So it is just like something, it is a decoration. But now, you know what is exciting? Today we have an exciting topic for you. And we are talking about the Old Testament. So last week, we got an introduction into the Bible and today they are going to talk about the Old Testament. We have an exciting teacher. I can't wait. I'm also going to be seated and I'm going to watch and I watch with you and I watch with my eye watching, watching this teacher telling us different things. But also what is more important is we still have praise and worship. We still have the memory verse. We still have the skills show where we teach you things, how to do things. I know some of you enjoyed uh, when we showed you how to fry an egg. Now you're frying eggs. It's too much. I can't tell it all. Anyways, I can't wait to see you again. Uh, let me also sit somewhere and watch.
Today our memory verse is coming from the book of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. And this is what it says. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness. Do you know what this means? Okay. So, let, let me try to explain more of how or what the memory verse means. So, it is saying that all scripture, meaning everything written in my Bible here, and the Bible you have there, or the Bible you've seen, has all come from God. It is God who has taught these Bible writers, the prophets, the apostles, and all these many people to write those scriptures. So, when you're reading the Bible, you're reading the word of God. And this particular word of God, it is to help you, to teach you on how you're going to do things, to help you to not to go, to, to fall into problems because it is like a directing book. It gives you directions on how to live. The Bible, also the scriptures we talk about here, they help, they rebuke, they are for rebuking and correcting. So if someone is doing something wrong and you find them doing something wrong, you can be like, stop whatever you're doing. The Bible says, do not steal. So the word is for rebuking and also for training in righteousness. We all need to be trained in righteousness and that is the main work of the scriptures that we have here in our Bibles.
Hello children, you're welcome to Kids 5-2 program. My name is Emma Mochivi and I'm very excited to be sitting here with you and we're going to learn today about the Old Testament. But before we continue, I would like you to, to sit a little bit uh, and wait and watch a video that is going to come up soon. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Sephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Welcome back from the short video. So hope you enjoyed it. So we're going to continue. Our Bibles has two main subdivisions. It has the Old Testament and the New Testament. But today we're going to focus more on the Old Testament, the parts of the Old Testament. So the Old Testament is made up of four parts and it has the Torah or the law, it has the historical books, it has the poetic books or the books of wisdom, and it also has the prophetic books. So the Torah or the law is made up of five books and these are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. These books talk about very many things. For instance, they talk about the creation of the world, how God created the world in six days, and how the man was, was, was a man disobeyed God. It talks about the disobedience of God by Adam and Eve, how they ate the forbidden fruit. The same books talk about the children of Israel, how they were in Egypt, in slavery, and then God led them out of Egypt through the Red Sea, into the desert. And at this particular time, we see God giving them the law. The law, uh, you people, are, I'm sure you've heard about the Ten Commandments. Yes, those are part of the laws that God gave to the children of Israel. They were to guide them on how to live well with others and also how to worship him better. Then after the law, we have the historical books. They start from the book of Joshua. They continued Judges, Ruth, and all those other books. They talk about how children of Israel were able to settle in the promised land. They show how God would punish them for disobeying him and how God would bless them for obeying his laws. After those books, we go to the wisdom ratings or the poetic books. These talk about how we ought to behave in the community, how we ought to treat other people, how we ought to, to, to treat those that are not as privileged as we are. And then after those books, we go to the prophetic books. These have very many prophecies, but mainly they talk about or they forward tell the life, the birth of Jesus, the life of Jesus, the death of Jesus, and they also talk about his second coming after the end of the world. So that is basically what the Old Testament talks about. And as children, I'm encouraging you to continue, to continue reading the word, continue reading the books of the Bible, because for out of this word, out of the Bible, you're going to become wise. And the Bible says that a wise man brings joy to his family. So I would like to encourage you to continue reading the Bible, if you don't have a Bible, then you can ask mommy or daddy or auntie or your teacher or even your Sunday school teacher to get for your Bible. Because as a child, you really need a Bible. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for watching Kids 252 program. I've been Emma Mochivi and we love you all in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ.
So children, we are going to also learn about how to highlight in our Bibles. Why do we have to, hi to highlight in our Bibles? Most of the times when we are in church or when you read your Bible, there are important, interesting stories in the Bible. Some of you want to use a pen, but it is not good to use a pen because when you do a mistake, it's very difficult for you to erase it. So I advise you to always use a pencil or a highlighter. And when you want to use a pencil, this is how you're going to highlight in your Bible. So I'm going to highlight on in Psalms chapter 52. This is how you're going to underline. This is how you underline in your Bible. You don't have to cross the words. Hope you've understood that. Thank you very much children and hope you've learned a lot of things. God bless you. children welcome to the kids 252 talk show my name is Sheena so uh, welcome back again so today we are going to be talking about laws and commandments mm? remember uh, in the Old Testament context uh, our God was a God of laws he still is a God of law but then uh, those days it was more of I tell you this you have to do this straight up but right now we are living in the grace of God and Jesus Christ you know so we have some car space, but I'm not saying we should see him, but I'm saying it's a little bit different. So I have a guest here that is going to help us break down a little bit so that we understand what these things mean. So please, welcome. Thank Mrs. you. Rita, kindly introduce yourself to the children. Yes, I'm Rita Barunji. I'm a teacher. I'm the head teacher of my another high school. 
And today we are talking about laws and instructions. Instructions are basically the guidelines given to a, an individual okay. or a, a society for, for the sake of creating order and for the sake of having a very, very well organized environment. Mm -hmm. that, that is the meaning of instructions. Mm -hmm. Now in the Old Testament, God gave instructions to the, to the Israelites. Mm -hmm. And basically in the, in, the, in the book of Exodus chapter 20, we see God giving them the Ten Commandments that mm -hmm. we always sing and sing and sing. And when you, we analyze well the commandments, they encompass or they, they, they involve so many things in them. So that is the instructions out to create order, mm -hmm. instructions that to, to help us to be organized in the society, maybe at home, mm -hmm. children at home, you have to, to, to follow the instructions given to you, at school follow the instructions, when you come to church follow the instructions, everywhere there is, even in the taxi, when we board a taxi, you know that we, there are instructions, yes, there's, there, there, there's a taxi you can board and they tell you, pay before you what? You enter. Or maybe... <laughs> You, you have to pay before you get out. Yes. Yeah, so, mm. so there are instructions everywhere, and so it is healthy to follow instructions. Why do you think it is important for us to, to follow these instructions? Yes, we have to follow instructions, basically mm. one, because it is God's command. For, yes. for instance, in the Old Testament, God, it, among the four commandments, let me base more on the commandments. Children know very well the first four commandments that God gave Mm. And there was that the, the other that respect and honor your father and mother. and mother. So that is why do we why, why do we follow instructions? Because it, God, it is a command. Mm. It is a command. Some instructions are co some laws are commands. You have to follow respect your mother and father as a child because it is a command from God. In the New Testament, we even have it where the Bible is saying that respect honor your father and mother. So that don't, your days are many on the earth. You see yes, that? Yes. So we follow instructions because it is a command. Yes. Every, in every society, as children, you need to follow instructions because it is a command. When you go to a, to a, to a place, maybe you visit a home and you, you, it is not your, 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 your home. You, mm -hmm. you look at what are the instructions there? What are the mm -hmm. commands there? What are I supposed to do? follow? It's very important. Yes. So that you, you, are, you even live well. You live well with, with people you find. You will be at peace with people. You will be a good child, mm. basically, if, yes. you are a good, uh, if you are good at following, following instructions. instructions. Mm. Okay. So that's number one. At yes. least give us like three. Yes. Why do we follow instructions? To create order. Mm. You see, when, 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 for instance, if you come to school and they say at this time, mm. e all of us have to have lunch. We are creating order. Mm. Imagine having lunch in a class, mm. a class time. So, if at, uh, for example, when you're at home, mommy says when we wake up, we have to first to do housework mm. so that there is order. You mm. cannot sit in a dirty, in a dirty, nice. in a dirty sitting room. Mm. Or when we cannot eat food when we even have uh, uh, utensils that are not washed. You see that? Yes. So to create order. Mm. Why do we follow instructions? To create order. When we, when, we, when we are following what is in place, if maybe you go to church and the, the Sunday school teacher says, children, we are sitting down. Mm. When you sit down, there is order. But mm. for example, if they are giving a cake and you are not willing to sit down, you might realize that the person serving the cake will not serve well. There will be a lot of kavuyo. Oh, there's a, a, lot of, eh, a lot of disorder. Okay. So when we follow instructions, there is order. When we follow instructions, there is peace. Mm. Mm? Imagine you are a child at home and your mother and father, or your guardian, you might be staying with people that are not your, your parents. And you are always, uh, you are always uh, following the, the instructions. You give them peace. Yes. You see, a child who follows what you tell them gives you peace. You feel peace. You feel at peace. And they are most and you say, Yes, and, mm. and you even, you, yes, you gain favor. Mm. Mm. When we follow instructions, we create order, we create peace. And also, when we follow instruction, it pleases God mm. because God is a God of order. Okay. Yeah. It, that's why in the Old Testament, those children of Israel always, wherever they did not follow instructions, God could co cause the prophets to come to them. Mm. So now, children, we have to follow instructions. Mm. Instructions at school, instructions mm. at home, instructions at church. Instructions everywhere we go, laws everywhere we go. When we follow instructions, we are at peace and it pleases God. Yes. God is pleased because wh wh who puts the instructions anyway? The leaders. Yes. You get. And God For chooses yes. his leaders. And God chooses his leaders. So children, wherever you go, you have to follow instructions. Mm. So basically it is peace, it is order, 
mm? harmony. Mm. Mm? When we follow instructions as children, we live in a, in a community where we are happy and we are, everyone is happy with you. Everyone will talk about you. For example, at home, you can, might be having 10 children. Mm. But if there are two who are following instructions, those are the ones that are going to make you happy sure. the more. As Very children, true. when we follow instructions, uh, your, your, your people that you, you are staying with become happy. Even the teachers at school. For example, now at school we have a, because of this COVID era, every day we are registering mm. at, at the gate. Mm. So you realize that every day children are registering and it, now it has gone into their minds. They know that now we have to register and we are now happy. Mm. Every time children come, they are registering their names. That means they have gotten that instruction. Mm, it is already so, imparted. Yeah, it is already imparted. It is now already part of them. So it is really pleasing and it makes us feel peaceful and happy with them. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Prairunji. Mm. So regardless of the fact that there are laws there, mm. existing in society and whatnot, mm. us as children, we still break those laws. Mm. Why do you think we break those laws? Okay, we break laws, first of all, some of us, if for instance we are in a, in a school mm. as children, most, not all of us are in homes where there are guidelines. They are instructions. Yes. So sometimes you might think a child is breaking the, a, a law mm -hmm. or an instruction, yet they don't know. Okay. You see that? Yet they don't know that they have to. There is also ignorance. Mm -hmm. When a child is not aware of what is supposed to be followed, mm -hmm. that is why as parents, you need to lay the guidelines very well at home. Okay. When, well, for example, me, when, I'm going, when, when I want my children to do some work, I start telling them after school. I, I mean the morning. <laughs> okay. When we go back home, <laughs> We are going to wash clothes. Mm. When we go back home, we are going to, to wash cups. Mm. Timothy, when you get your, your shoes, put them here. You get. <laughs> Sometimes children don't follow instructions because the, the, the guidelines are not clear. Mm. We, as parents, we shouldn't assume mm. it is very that wrong. They know. Yeah, for me as a mm. teacher, I've realized it is very wrong to assume that it children know what to okay. do. Mm. You see that? Yes. It is very important we give clear instructions. Mm? Let the children know what they have to follow, mm. even if it is at home. Let them know that at home we start with A, B, and C. Mm. At home, for example, there are children that move around the village mm. and the child wakes up early in the morning and is just loitering around. Mm. Because the mother did not give them or the father or the judge that my boy, my girl, when we wake up at, at early in the morning, we this is what this. we do. Okay. You see that? Yes. So, why do children not follow instructions? Because they, they are ignorant about them. Sometimes they are in, a, in places where the instructions are not clear. That is why uh, then, uh, even in some places, they, are, they, are, they, they put posters. Hmm? Don't step here. Don't sit here. Mm. So instructions have to be clear to children. So, so children, when you are given instructions, mm. when, 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 you are, when you are not given instructions, can you please ask Hmm? Mm. If you are in a new home, for example, you can ask your judge. You have mm. gone to visit your judge in the village. Can you ask the judge, judge here, how do you do things here, judge? Mm. Because you might do, go wrong and they start to say, this is not a good child. Yet, because they don't know. That's yes. why they don't follow instructions. instructions. For example, in school, we always have to give children instructions and remind them mm, repeatedly. Mm. Every time you have to... Eh? You have always to tell them, children, this is what we are going to do. Children, you have to do this every time. So, so the reason, yes, the reason why children don't follow instructions is sometimes they are not clear. They don't know what to do. Okay. Eh? Especially when they come to new places. Uh, recently, we took children for, 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 uh, for, for football gala. But I had to, to call the people there and I tell them, can you please lock all the, the bathrooms? Why? Because I knew they would mess them up. Mm. You get. So... We need to make uh, children not follow instructions because they are not guided well. Then also, another issue is that even us as parents, sometimes we don't know what to do. You get that? <laughs> we don't know what to tell our children. Imagine a, a, a parent was a street child, mm. and now they have grown up. By the grace of God, they have grown up. They are yeah. also parents. Children don't grow on streets. Mm. Children grow in our home where there are guidelines. Mm. So, in case... The parent is not also parented well. It causes children not to follow instructions. Because they don't know what to do. There are homes where children just wake up, they sleep up to 10. Hmm? So in such cases, yeah. we cannot say that a child is, not, is rebellious. 
we have to first know are children given is, is this child a way of what he's supposed so to do so how do we how do we improve on such societies the parent grew up from the street and now the and now that parent is a parent now the issue is how do we how do we improve in such cases please attend church listen to programs eh? ask mm. people mm. Be, because you might be now an adult but you don't know how to parent for mm. example if you have children in in in, in, in i mean in 0 to 0 to 0 to 6 is different 7 to 12 is different mm. the way we have to handle 7 to 12 is different mm. so we need to to learn as parents we need to learn from others you get okay. we need to ask people let's yes. consult you see we are, we are in a society where these days people don't want to consult mm. but you need to consult like how can i handle my boy is now becoming it, it, it is now becoming unruly mm. he's not following instructions now per, your fellow parents will give you ins, uh, guidelines okay. yeah and me it has helped me so much they can tell you now you do this mm. do this uh, so it's very important okay thank you so much miss barinji uh, to the kids, mm. oh, Mrs. Barinji, my mm. apologies. To the kids, mm. please obey instructions. Yes. To the parents, mm. in part. Mm. Yes. Thank you so much for listening in. I hope mm. this has been very helpful. See you next time. Bye bye. bye. Caring for the parts of the body. is my toothbrush it is in the color orange now you know what time it is take a toothbrush add a small amount of toothpaste then brush this is the way we brush our teeth brush our teeth brush our teeth this is the way we brush our teeth we do it morning and evening we do it morning and evening Brushing up and brushing down, left and right and round and round. Brush it till our teeth are clean. We do it every day. We do it every day. So, this is how we keep our teeth clean. A boy once lived with his parents. He always goes to play football with his dirty clothes. He refuses to wash his hands with soap and water when eating. After school, he wears the same dirty clothes. He comes home after playing and does not take his bath. One day, he fell sick and was taken to the hospital. On arrival to the hospital, he goes straight to the consulting room. The doctor said he was suffering from bacterial infection. This is because he ate with the germs around his hands and got infected. The doctor vaccinated him and advised him to always be neat. He followed what the doctor said. He took all his medicines and he got well. Body parts and how to care for them. The eye. Wear protective eyeglasses. The leg. Exercise regularly to keep the leg strong. The nose. Avoid putting objects and our hands in our nostrils. The hand. Wash your hands with soap and water. The ear. Stop using cotton swabs in your ears. The mouth. Lightly brush your tongue to help keep your mouth clean. Children, I hope you've enjoyed our show today. It has been nice and it has been exciting. We can't wait to have you again. By the way, we are now counting on our fingers. It's, you're about to come back home for all day. I know you're so tired and exhausted. School is very, very tiresome, but you need school. Stay at school, read those books, make sure you're very good children wherever you are. And very soon I know you're coming back. And Easter is also knocking on the door, so make sure Read the books, you read faster, faster, so that we can, eh? Easter can come closer, closer, eh? okay? Anyways, we can't wait to see you next week. I have been Francis, and I'm so excited that I am part of this Kids 252 show. Till next time, bye!
Bye-bye. Bye-bye.